They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Star. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stars in the House. My name is Natasha Yvette Williams. And while this show looks different, it is February. And Seth and James have been so gracious to pass the mic to Black Theater United. That is a theater group of Black professionals who stand together to help protect Black people, Black talent, Black lives of all shapes and orientations. Our friends here at Stars in the House are allies to us, and we hope that you will be too. Tonight, we unite our voices to empower each community through activism and several other areas. One such woman we are honoring tonight. Her name is Miss Cicely Tyson, and we'd like to honor her because of her voice for honoring us. Just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thy bid is to me I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. We've got a big lineup for you, and we're just interested in celebrating this icon, this pioneer, this woman who has meant so much to me in my life over the years as I've watched her um, blossom and stand up for me, for you, for all of us. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with one of the seeds of Cicely Tyson's legacy. Her name is Miss Olivia Manning, and she is 14 years old. Is Olivia out there? Hi, you're mute. <laughs> there it is. Oh, okay. There it is. How Hello. are you, Olivia? I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. It's good to see you tonight. See I you have, too. I want to start off with just asking a, I guess it's a Black history, because this is February. Black History Month, um, even though Black History is every day, but you know we're okay. celebrating it this month collectively as a nation. And I want to ask you a question. Hmm. I think I'm going to ask this question. Do you happen to know who was the first African American woman to win an Emmy? Was it okay. A. Gail Fisher, B. Cicely Tyson? C, Ruby D, D, Betty Jones. Those choices are A, Gail Fisher. Cicely Tyson is B, Ruby D is C, and D is Betty Jones. What would your guess be? This or is if you know, you might know. Difficult because I'm I'm I feel like you're psyching me out. I I feel like the answer should be Cicely Tyson, but um, I'm pretty sure it's Gail Fisher. I I just feel like. You thought it was a trick question, and it kind of was a trick question. You are absolutely right, though. The first oh. African-American woman to win an Oscar, an Emmy, I'm sorry, an Emmy, was Gail Fisher. And she won yeah. that for her portrayal of the secretary in Mannix, I believe was the show. And she was the first person to win an Emmy in a supporting role. But had you said Cicely Tyson, you would have also been correct, because Cicely was the first woman to win an Oscar in a lead role. And she did that. Do you know what play, what show that was? What TV show that was? What movie? Um, How to Get Away with Murder. It might've been, I know she would things for that. 
She did win things for that, but her first Emmy, her first Emmy was for the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. That's what she won for. Awesome. All righty, everybody. What was it, Sounder? Somebody it, write I, in the I chat. Think, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it was Sounder. I, I know. Think it was Sounder. You're right. Be, yeah. And you are already nominated, Emmy nominated actress. Is that right? Yes. You are an Emmy nominated actress for your role in what's the name of the show? Butterbeans Cafe on Butterbeans Cafe. Butterbeans. That's a Nickelodeon show, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So we're glad to have you. So you are already walking in Sicily's footsteps. And we like to, I like to think of you as one of the flowers or the blooms of the seed she has planted down through the years. Thank how you. would you say that you see uh, Sicily's legacy and how does it affect you in your career? Well, she's a powerful presence on and off screen. You know, her activism throughout her entire life is um, extremely important for all little black girls like me, I think that representation on screen is um, extremely important to be able to see that her success is could be my success and that all of that is possible. Um, to be able to watch a career play out um, all throughout someone's life, it makes me feel like, hey, I wanna do that. Someone that's doing exactly what I wanna do, that looks exactly like me, it just mm -hmm. lets you know that everything is possible. And I think that she has preached that for, many people before mm -hmm. and after me. She definitely has. Um, now, who is your modern day uh, Cicely Tyson? Who is your modern day person that you take some influence um, I like Nikanani Rose a lot just because um, I'm a musical theater major um, in New York at Professional Performing Arts School, and she was on Broadway and things like that. So I, I love theater and everything that has to do with it. Um, but she was. I also know her mainly from um, Princess and the Frog. Uh, mm -hmm. and which was an animated show. Uh, and I feel like, you know, her You're career kind of could look like what I want mine to look like. Um, so following her in her footsteps would be, would be amazing. I met her and she is the nicest person ever. I freaked out <laughs> and I just, I love her so much and she's okay. amazing. Uh, yeah, her career okay. is phenomenal. Well, we want to congratulate you, Olivia, and thank you for being a theater maker, a young theater maker. We at uh, Black Theater United also have several programs that are coming up. You're a little young for them now, but soon you will be ready to enter into some of those programs that are mentorship programs. So we are a group that is about change and a group that is about making the play the playing field level for all people, but especially for Black people all around the world. We thank you so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you for, for honoring inviting me tonight. You're welcome. You're welcome. Y'all look out for Miss Olivia Manning. She is, like I said, already Emmy nominated. And uh, we're going to watch your career and watch you blossom and watch you take up the mantle that Cicely has so uh, brilliantly left for us. Honoring Thank Cicely you. Tyson. Thank you. That means a lot. Aww. Our next uh, person to come up. Y'all, we're raising money for Black Theater United, and we're do, we do a lot of things on um, the, the organization. We're brand new. We were started back in June, actually, um, right after the murder of George Floyd. Um, LaShance and Audra McDonald, who are some of the founding members, uh, actually got together, called some friends up. We got on a Zoom call and just sort of brainstormed, what can we do? You know, what, what can we do? Our hands are... Uh, to use? What can we do with our hands? How can we use our voices? How can we use our uh, celebrity, if you will, to make a change and say something about the injustices that were happening? It seemed like every time you turned around, it seemed like every day you watched television, you were weeping at the uh, atrocities that were happening. So uh, Black Theater United was formed uh, out of that uh, pain and restlessness, but out of that determination to actually empower people to make a difference and change what we were seeing and what we were not hearing as a silent voice that our community was not necessarily reaching out as often or as quickly as we would have liked to hear some response. Um, one of the things that Cicely is known for, Ms. Tyson is also known for being an, an advocate and being a um, activist. She, um, I forget what show it was, but she performed in a uh, film. And um, after it, someone asked her, a reporter or some person was saying that they felt uh, empathy with her character and with the character her husband played and with the child. And their comments led her to believe that he did not believe Black people to be human. And it was at that point 
that she decided that she would use more than she would be more than just an actress. She would take her role as an actress to be her voice and advocate for her people and for black women. And the roles that she took on after that were of strong women who uh, had something to say, strong women who had something to say and who you could find your own humanity in those characters. So we thank Cicely for standing up there are young Miss Tysons out in the world today. And one such young lady we're calling up next. You may have seen her in uh, Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway, or you might've seen her in some protests just marching about the city and, and standing up for underprivileged people and underrepresented people. Uh, her name is Miss Diamond R. White, Diamond Essence White. And we'd like to call Diamond if she's around to come up and join us on the screen. Hi, Diamond, how are you? Hi. Welcome to Stars in the House. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're welcome. What were you doing when the pandemic hit? Were you in Dear Evan Hansen at the time or did you just, you just left, I think the show at that time, right? Yeah, I, I left um, I left Dear Evan Hansen June of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic hit, I was like in the middle of a bunch of callbacks for things. And I was actually supposed to leave for my next job. I was supposed to go to Michigan to do Little Shop of Horrors. Mm -hmm. And um, they canceled the show I think three days before I was supposed to fly out. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I've had that happen a couple of times where I've gotten into a show and then it was supposed to run for a year and it ran for two weeks or something <laughs> like that. So, so that happened. The pandemic has put a lot of people um, in need and out of work. Um, we were actually dealing with uh, several pandemics this summer. Um, uh, we had the uh, pandemic of the virus, the COVID-19 virus, and we also had the pandemic of racism. And, and as I stated earlier, before you came out, I was talking about Ms. Tyson's um, stand for people, for Black people and for Black women, and to, to take on roles that represented um, her well and represented you and I well. And so um, you too are an activist. Right. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. seen you in several things across the city, uh, marching and standing up for what is right. Um, so can we just, uh, Aaron, I don't know. What do we have for D Diamond? Do we have a, a video clip of some of her activities? <laughs> I'm scared being out here. Uh -huh. I'm scared for my life being out here. There's a pandemic going on, but the biggest pandemic is racism, racism and white supremacy. Yeah. 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 It's been a pandemic for 400 plus years, and it has to end. So on that note, I want to lift up the names of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. All right. So you are an activist as well. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, Cicely Tyson's effect, her legacy on you and how it somehow governs how you choose to use your celebrity, your position as an actress to speak out and to move people into a place of change, into a place of recognizing the humanity in others, in all people? Well, I think the biggest thing I can take away from Cicely Tyson is her bravery. Um, being a woman, d being a black woman during the time that she was an activist was a different beast entirely. So I think her using her voice gives young black women like myself the courage to use our voices. Um, even like recently, I'm sure you saw on my social media, there was... I, I did an event at a school and um, experienced some major racism there. And I put it out on my social media platform to bring awareness to it. And I had students in my inbox saying like, thank you so much because we experience racism like frequently every day in the hallways after school and nobody ever says anything, nothing happens for us. So this feels like we can actually use our voices. It feels like we can actually report these things and be heard. So that is one way that I like, I admire Cicely Tyson. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is one way that I admire Cicely Tyson and the impact that she's had on me, but also as an actress, her willingness to turn down roles that did not represent her as a black woman well, 
is something that I admire and I'm trying to adopt for myself. I'm still very young in my career and, you know, as a young black woman in the arts, it is sometimes daunting to turn down a role or turn down an audition because you're like, I just want to work. But I feel like watching her and her integrity and her regality inspires me to turn down the roles that don't represent me well, represent black women the way that we should be represented as powerful, amazing women. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Here, here. Here, here. Well, you're doing just that. You are being an amazing woman even right now and helping to change lives, helping to change and affect change. I know that those students at that school reached out to you, but I'm sure everyone wasn't as welcoming for your voice. Um, so we have to push through that. We have yeah. to fight and know that people are... Um, don't know that they need to change sometimes. So we have to show them a better way. So we thank you for all of your efforts. Thank you. Um, and we thank you for your voice. So keep pushing your voice and being um, a legacy keeper uh, for Miss Cicely Tyson. Um, uh, do you have an admirer in this prayer? I can't pronounce their name, but they just said something. On the screen. <laughs> I want to that. tell people that are making donations tonight. Um, uh, we will also have an opportunity to read your name on the screen. I think we'll be getting some receipts of the pledges that you're making and be able to read those out aloud. So please, uh, you can donate to Stars in the House. You can donate to Black Theater United. Um, I think those that's running across the, the bottom of the screen. You can also, don't forget the Actors Fund. There's several different groups that are doing great things. And we all, uh, as Diamond said, don't want to turn down work, but a lot of people are just out of work right now. A lot of um, actors, a lot of the backstage people, everybody in our industry is, is, is out of work. But the Actors Fund helps not only actors, but everyone involved in the theater and involved in film and television and all of those positions that you don't see. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, do what you can. Donate when you can. Use your hands when you can. Use your voice when you can to help someone. Thank you, Diamond, for coming Thank to spend you. some time with us. Thanks, Natasha. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now, I think we, um, are we ready for our next guest, Aaron? I don't know if you know how we talk. We should, what should we talk about? I think we wanted to talk about some donations. I know this night is about um the Stars in the House audience, you are used to um, fabulous talent and fabulous voices and stars coming to the house. You get to do this from your home uh, homes. You, you tune in and you can see Seth and James interviewing uh, fabulous people at all times. But they're really doing um, a great work um, with the Actors Fund. Uh, Black Theater United is also doing a great work. We're getting started, just getting started. We've had several programs already. Our next guest is ready to come out, and I believe that is Jordan Sparks. She and I uh, did a uh, little ditty called Waitress Together uh, on Broadway, but she is, uh, I don't know what her main thing is known for. American Idol is where I fell in love with her. She was a pioneer then, being one of the youngest people to win um, American Idol. So we'd love for her to come on out and... Uh, and be with us. <laughs> you didn't know we had that picture, did you? <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm dying. I miss yeah. you. I miss yes. you. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> you look great. What are you doing? You. I'm. You know what? To be completely honest, I'm be chilling honest. with my yeah. husband, watching martial arts movies. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. DJ DJ is actually with his friends because you know he gets tired of us. So oh, yes, um he we have a family, you know, that that stays safe and you know they they keep each other safe and we you know follow all the protocols, but he's he's been up there. Okay. Um so you know, me and Hubby got time. So what do we do? Watch martial arts. Oh, good. Now how old is DJ now? How does DJ now? He's gonna be three in May. Oh, my God, okay. Three. I wish we could see him. He's so big, he's so oh. big and intelligent, and it was really cool to be able to watch him grow every single day. Not that I would push the pandemic or anything on anyone, but right. it, I'm really grateful that I had the time to to watch him. You know, this pandemic is definitely giving us the opportunity. I put my kids to bed more this year than I ever have in their nine years. Um, so that I am grateful for the time that we've yeah. been. Um, 
I'd hope, love to do it without the threat of this pandemic, but um, it, it it is, you know, if we're looking for the rainbows, if we're looking for the positive things, which also is one of the things that Miss Cicely Tyson did. We're tying everything to this great mm -hmm. icon, Queen Cicely Tyson. Um, I remember as a child, a uh, young person, um, getting, my mother used to get Jet Magazine and Ebony Magazine, and Cicely would grace the covers at several, several different months out of the year. So it was a, a really big um deal for me to just be able to honor her. Uh, this yeah. um, I also would like to know how has her legacy affected you? You're a singer and an actress, a performer mm -hmm. and a black woman. And we just want to know um, how has her legacy affected you? Yeah, it's been <clears throat> it's been interesting because growing up, I mean, she's she's been it's it'll let me rephrase it's going to be strange moving forward not seeing her everywhere you know she's my whole life that i've been alive she's been in movies and 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 doing everything that she has that she did in her career and then exuding the grace that she had mm -hmm. and for me you know watching her in film and just kind of observing and even seeing pictures like you could tell she just exuded so much poise yeah. Yeah. and so much grace and she knew who she was which I loved, like, you know, that when you look at her, she knows exactly what she is in this world, in this universe, you know, she knew what her purpose was. And that's such a beautiful thing and a, a encouraging um, to someone like me and to, to, to everybody, I feel like just to, mm -hmm. to be strong and to stand firm in who you are mm -hmm. and to not let anyone, um, you know, tell you about yourself that you, that the things that you already know. Not saying that you can't have criticism, that's not what I'm saying at all, but like innately who you are at your core, you, everybody knows who they are. Well, maybe not everybody, but I hope that everybody will will eventually get to the point where they know who they are. And for me, I'm at that point in my life. I, I know who I am, you know, and I know what I want out of this life. I know, you know, what I wanna do with my career. I know what I wanna do with all the things that I'm just able to be presented. And I'm so grateful to have the blessings to be presented. And so I think for me moving forward, it's that staying true and holding on to the core of who I am and also just being unapologetic about that like i love that she when she would speak and she would talk in you know her interviews and she would always be real she was always 100 percent real yeah. but the way she said it was so classy and so pretty so many people can take so many cues you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying but, but she she was brilliant she was brilliant when was the first time you met her do you remember when you met her first for the first time well, it, it actually was the f first and only time that I can remember. I'm sure we probably were in the same rooms, but mm -hmm. um, the first time I got to meet her was at the Sparkle premiere. Mm -hmm. And it was a really big moment for me because, you know, we had just lost Whitney. And so we were missing her presence. We were missing her there, even though we felt her there. You know, she there's was a, with there's us. There's a picture up now. There's a picture up Yes. There. Oh, my gosh. You're such a baby in this picture. Oh, so look at her. And look she her. is just regal. Yes. All the time. Look at regal. her. All the time, Grace. Yes. Love it. And she was just so sweet and so kind. So that was the picture from the after party. So I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if she watched or saw the whole movie, but she came up mm -hmm. to me and she was just saying so many kind things. And it's actually really hard to remember because I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she came up to me and I, it was just like blackout. I was like, mm -hmm. I cannot believe she's standing in front of me. This is right. insane. But right. she was so beautiful. And that night was a blur too, because so much had gone into the creation of the movie. Mm -hmm. And for everything that happened after that, um, you know, not being able to have Whitney there, it was just really nice to have somebody there who was just so grounded. You know, everybody was so excited and she was just grounded. Like, yeah. hi, it's lovely to meet you. And your work was great. And I was just like, I know, it's Cicely Tyson. I'm sweating thinking about it. I'm like sweating. Yeah, don't sweat, don't sweat. It. Don't sweat. It's crazy. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, that, you know, I, I love you and we really have to just get some time to just chit chat. We uh, work together for On Waitress. Yes, uh, that was your Broadway debut, right? Uh, actually, it was my well. So I, no, I it wasn't right. The second show you did second, um, second. in the Heights. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. I forgot. About um, that. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. I miss it, mm -hmm. Natasha. Like yeah, I'm I miss I we all, We're all missing it now. We're all missing it now. Yes, <laughs> the stage. Oh my gosh, it just. I I hope we can figure out a way for it to come back because it's so important. Yeah, and I just back. on a 
on a personal note, I just miss you guys. Like I miss mm-hmm. coming to the stage every day and seeing your face and, yeah. you know, seeing Caitlin and, mm-hmm. and Brandon and yeah. Molly yeah. and yeah. every, just yeah. everybody. Yeah. Like I just yeah. miss everybody's energy. And we had such a good time. I, I don't think, I don't think waitress, I would have looked back on it as fondly if I didn't have the cast that I had. You guys were just, you guys made it easy to just be like, boop, boop, hey, I'm here now. What's up? You know, I, I think that's one of the beautiful things about theater is that we we do become a family. And I'm sure once I start doing television regular, I'm going to say the same thing about those casts as well. But just to yeah. the family that you become is is a, is a beautiful thing. And we we will be back. We will get to it. It won't look quite the same as it did before, but but we're grateful for the change and it doesn't need to look the same. Things need to change. That's part of yeah. why we're even taking over uh, tonight uh, at, at Stars in the House because the injustices, uh, racial injustices that were present, uh, we're, we're trying to, to work those out and, and work them away from being in our society. So we thank you so much, Jordan, for taking the time. You got some new music. I just, just mentioned that. What's your new music? What's going on? Oh, yes. I have a new song. I have a new song that'll release tonight. Um, it's called You'll release still- it tonight. Yes. Release it'll, it tonight. Uh, well, wait a minute. So what time is it? It's almost 830 there. So at 12 midnight. Okay. Midnight. 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 Why did you, why did why did you do this? Why did you do this? And I'm like, for that moment, right there. Right so there. <laughs> I'm excited. You know, we go get a lot of love songs because it's February and you know right. Valentine's Day is coming up and stuff. But I was like, you know, let's hit them with a little bit of a not really sad. It's empowering, but it's mm-hmm. like it's emotional. It's intense. But I think you're okay. gonna really like it. I can't wait to hear it. You all look for Jordan and look for the people that are making things happen in a Cicely Tyson legacy way. We thank you so much for being with us, my dear. And I hope to talk to you you. real soon. I love love you. I love you. I love you. (laughs) All right. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for joining us. And, and, and we, uh, like I said, uh, Jordan and I worked on a waitress on Broadway and Broadway, this Broadway community has really been affected. Certainly all the entertainment communities, whether it's dance or orchestral or symphonies or ballets or, or operas, all of us have been affected. Uh, television and film has been affected as well. They're starting to come back a little bit with the COVID protocols, but theater will take a little bit longer just because of the nature and the style of the way we present and tell stories. Um, we'd like to bring on our next guest now to talk a little bit about this uh, um, health pandemic that we're in. We've got, we're going all over the place tonight, but we're just with um, honoring Cicely Tyson in mind and honoring po- pioneers uh, with strong uh, voices for people. And, and wherever you can, please don't forget to go to starsinthehouse.com and make those donations, make those pledges. Um, we appreciate everything and know that everything is going toward making our society, our theatrical, our business, our industry a better place um, through the efforts of organizations like uh, Black Theater United and the many organizations that have come up. But tonight we need your help and we just ask that you would be involved wherever you can. Um, Dr. Tracy Gardner is going to come to us. Um, Seth and James, hey Tracy, have a... Um, uh, a doctor who comes on every uh, show and talks about uh, health concerns. And, and we wanted to do the same thing and honor that tradition because I think it's very important. And being that this is February, we mm. are certainly going to center the conversation uh, on uh, Black History Month and Black History uh, events. So first of all, welcome, Dr. Tracy Gardner. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. You're also a theater lover. You're not only a a medical doctor, but you are a theater and arts lover. And um, I know that's because I've seen you at several of of my (laughs) I'm so so glad to um, have you here in this professional capacity, your professional capacity. Um, So Dr. Gardner, a lot of people get uh, confused about what a vaccine is, you know, mm-hmm. what a vaccine means or whether it's a, uh, uh, you know, I, I, what is the word, whether it's the solution to your sickness or whether it's something to prevent. So why don't you just talk to us a little bit about 
what is a vaccine or anything that you want to say in that particular area? Yeah, and it's a great question, right? Because we talk about vaccines as if people understand what they are. Mm -hmm. So vaccines are a biological preparation. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that it is made to fight against a particular infectious disease. Okay. So in, sure it's made to fight. It, right. It comes, right. Right. To prevent. <laughs> and, and and what it does is it it, it causes your body to react to the vaccine so that your body will create an immune response so that when you get exposed to that particular infectious disease later, you would in fact be able to fight against it. So you take it now preventatively so that when you get exposed later, you will be able to fight against it. Okay, very good, very good. So that's what a vaccine is for those who are wondering. Mm -hmm. um, because we are centering this show around Cicely Tice, I'm going to ask you about her yet later, because I'm sure you probably have some thoughts on, on yeah. her. Um, but um, my next question, we are talking about pioneers. We are talking because Cicely was that for so many people, um, is that still um, a pioneer, definitely for me in my career. But there's some pioneers that are, that are centered around this COVID vaccine, are there not? Absolutely. Okay. And so the name that we all should remember, what is that is, name? Uh, yes, her name is Dr. Kismia, Kismika um, Corbett. Dr. Corbett is her name. And Dr. Corbett works for the Allergy and Immunology, the National Institute of Allergy and Immunology Diseases at the National Institute of Health. She got that position to lead vaccine research, cent um, the research center in, in 2014. Okay. And her job was to create a vaccine against coronavirus in 2014. So we're talking about, what, six, seven years ago? Absolutely. Years ago, um, that she started working on this coronavirus vaccine. Absolutely. So, so the expediency of it being developed is not uh, Operation Warp Speed. It's <laughs> no, not. <laughs> this, this, the, the, this vaccine started development or started the research for it started about six to seven years ago. Is that Absolutely. Exactly. And, and completed by uh, Dr. Kismika Corbett. Absolutely. So we can't have any conversation mm -hmm. about coronavirus vaccine that doesn't start with, and the person who discovered this vaccine is an African American woman. She mm. is a pioneer. We need to, it, you know, we will not. This is the sec, This is the the last vac. Um, uh, pandemic was a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So what she has done is miraculous. Mm -hmm. And so it is not rushed. It mm -hmm. was expedient for the time on something she had been working on for the past six to seven years. And we are so grateful for her. She is truly a pioneer. Yes. Yes, she is. We are, we're celebrating her. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me see. Let me see what else what I want to ask. What do we, how, what are some of the, the, the hesitations or the, yeah. the, um, the not myths is not the word, but some of the ideas surrounding the fact because I, I I was researching or, or listening to something today, and I think um, the statistics are something that we know that this this particular virus, the coronavirus, COVID nineteen, is affecting people of color in a larger um, amount than anyone else in yeah. terms of uh, people of color, black and brown people. Um, but I also surprisingly saw, in terms of not surprisingly, because we we know that this is is something that happens in our communities. Um, the lack of people are taking, being willing to take it. I haven't taken it. Not sure. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm taking it. Um, we, BTU are not saying to take it. We're just trying to provide you with information, all of you with information. But about five or six percent of African American people are have currently, I think, taken the vaccine, as opposed to I think it was like fourteen percent uh, Latin Americans, uh, and the numbers for other groups go jump up exponentially in terms of what, what do you think is the hesitation or why historically uh, do black and brown people tend to not trust vaccines or not trust doctors or what, what do you think that is? What, what does that come from? Um, yeah. So some of those numbers are supply and demand. So as you know, um, the, um, you know, we, there isn't enough for everyone, right? So that's a first piece of it, but there is a significant 
uh, concern for black and brown people around this vaccine. And I often tell people though, you know, I have taken it and I have gotten both doses and I'm okay. And, um, but I will, I do tell people that it was mental gymnastics to get there, right? Because at the end of the day, I also have the same reservations as every other brown and brown and black person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it stems from the, the history of how black people have been treated by the healthcare system and the public health system, like the Tuskegee project, but the Tuskegee study. But the important piece that we should remember is that the Tuskegee study wasn't about giving someone some giving them a treatment that they should not get. What they did was they withheld treatment for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So there's a very there's a difference here, right? They mm -hmm. would it still was terrible, but they mm -hmm. withheld treatment that they should have given. Whereas what we have now is that there's a treatment that we don't want to take. So there's mm -hmm. a very different distinction, <laughs> okay? Right, right. And I think that's an important one we have to make. Sure. And 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 also we are aware that what the pandemic has done is shown disparities in all of our systems. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's not specific to the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And I often hear people say, well, if we just had more black and brown doctors, then it would be fine. Well, we only make up 5%. So that's mm -hmm. not going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to advocate and mm -hmm. educate and do these kinds of things with every uh, credible messenger in every field so that we get the word out of education and advocacy so that you can make a personal choice that is based on knowledge. Yes. And not fear. Here. That sounds wonderful. Based mm -hmm. on knowledge and not fear. That's a perfect <laughs> lead in to Miss Cicely Tyson. Yes. Yes. <laughs> certainly was always prepared, always uh, mindful of her craft, always on point and never fearful always mm -hmm. stepping forward, using her voice to protect uh, brown and black bodies. And we just thank you for that. How, how has her legacy affected you, Ms. Dr. Tracy Gardner? I mean, she is such a pioneer. As you know, I am a huge, my, my parents were huge Broadway people. They took me to Broadway shows. My mm -hmm. first Broadway show was Eartha Kid in Timbuktu. And mm -hmm. so um, I just always have loved Broadway and I've loved theater. And I think the thing about Cicely Tyson that was so unique is that whether she was playing a sharecropper in Sounder or she was playing a, you know, um, uh, this, an activist and a man called Adam, there was something about like, I don't think, she, I mean, nobody told her that your purple royalness should not emanate from the sharecropper, right. but yet, <laughs> right. Yeah, it just, yeah. there, her energy and her vibe just, it just did that. Like it mm -hmm. just, it, 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 it always came off as this, mm -hmm. like you could feel and sense it of mm -hmm. like just her poison and, and the regalness of it. And yet she felt so tangible. Oh. That is a gift. Like mm -hmm. it felt like if you went in the room with her, she was still royal yet tangible. And I think that's what made her so special to us. Um, because for those of us, rather you got to meet her or you didn't get to meet her, you still felt like you knew her through the screen. There's something super powerful about that. And I think that's why we feel so we miss her so much, mm -hmm. even though we, in our minds, we're like, okay, she was 96 years old. We know people can't live forever. Right. And yet we wanted to just keep that feeling. What a yeah. blessing she was. Yes, yes. Yes, she was. Thank you so much. Dr. You're Dr. welcome. For sharing that. You have made my eyes tear up just a little bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah. thank you so much for, for just giving us some information about um, the COVID uh, vaccine and, and why we sometimes tend to um, not want to take these things and not want to be involved, but we need to take care of ourselves. But everybody needs to make that decision for themselves. So we Absolutely. encourage you to do that. Encourage you to do that. And those mental gymnastics might be going <laughs> on, but certainly do the research and find out what you need to do. <laughs> but I don't want to yeah. do in the Olympics. I want you right. to <laughs> get there. But yes. Yeah, right. Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. My right. pleasure. Thank All you right. for having me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's such an honor to be here tonight just to talk about Ms. Cicely Tyson. And as Dr. Gardner was um, uh, talking, actually, let's go ahead and bring up our next couple of guests. Um, and they can hear me say this because actually one of my friends is in that group who I want to talk about the night that I, um, I think it was the second time I had met 
um, Sicily, but it was the first time I was actually just in her sphere and just standing in the room with her. So if we could bring up Rhonda and Angela and Miss Linda Twine, um, we're going to come on together and just take this party out. Hi, ladies. So good to see you. So good to see you. Um, it's good to see you. Good to see. Oh, look at shoulders. Oh, you and Rhonda both got your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we gotta get a little. I don't know. We in the house. We gotta show a little skin. Um, I uh, just want to say, as uh, Dr. Gardner just mentioned, that um, we all felt like we knew Sicily. Felt like. Uh, her, her, her grace, her regalness just emanated from her um, on the screen, whether she was playing a sharecropper or playing Coretta Scott King or whoever she was playing, um, her, her, her joy, her magic, her um, divine nature just sort of shone through her, her screen, her star power, her stardom, if you will, um, was just so magnetic and so bright. But what I want to note is that in that, if you're in the room with her, she made you feel that you were that as well. Um, and I think that's part of her power, part of her uh, magnetism, part of that icon uh, spirit that she has is that she was interested in you um, yeah. and interested in uh, your responses to questions. And I, I'm just in awe at how, uh, what a giant she was but how embracing she was of someone she didn't even know, you know, someone off the street. I read something uh, like on my Facebook page or somebody's Facebook, one of my friends who said they were in school at Juilliard, I think, or somewhere in the city. And they ran into her. She was teaching a class there or, or coming to speak, ran into her and walking to the subway or walking somewhere. And, and he was like, Oh, I love you. Um, such and such. And I really want, you know, to be able to enjoy this talk lecture you gave. would love to take you to lunch sometime whenever you're blah 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 and she said i'm hungry now <laughs> and and he said oh let's go now he had another class to go to but he skipped his class i don't even remember who this was y'all tell me tonight you come talk to me if you hear that but um he skipped his class to go have lunch with sicily tyson and um thought it was one of the best things he could ever do for his life not his career but for his life just to sit and talk to her. I feel that way about you, Miss Twine. I feel that way um, about your pioneer uh, spirit and about how you have deposited into, I uh, know Angela and I, and, and, and I'm, Rhonda, I'm not sure if you know Miss Twine, but, but I, I know that you have deposited so much into the two of us and to so many people. And I just wanna publicly say thank you um, for being uh, a, a carrier, a carrier of that, uh, Tyson spirit, that Tyson legacy as well, to to lead us all and to teach mm -hmm. us um, at every turn. Mm -hmm. um, so welcome, my friends. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I don't know how we how we want to start off. Uh, the, the question for everybody is how has Miss Tyson's legacy? What do you see that as, and how is it how has it affected you? And you can anybody can start. Well, I have. Oh, and my, yes, go ahead. I'm shocking <laughs> myself. <laughs> I know, right? Because you want you wanted all easy questions. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting it over with, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have always admired Cicely Tyson because she has made choices and she's made choices in how she presents herself on screen or on stage. And that is something to be admired because many times that does not work out very well financially for you or in other ways. But that's what I, appre I really appreciate about her. Now, I know I asked all of you that question, but y'all think about that. We're gonna sit with Miss Twine right now. We're gonna sit with Ms. Twine for just okay. a minute. Um, and, and, and I just wanna talk about um, making choices and mm -hmm being 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 free to to make those choices even in the face of it it might cause you some detriment some sometime now in your career now those of you who don't know miss twine was um the music the, the conductor on my broadway debut which was the color purple oh wow but <laughs> she is also the only the third now that was in 2006 and 7 i believe um 
but you at that time were only the third uh, black woman to mm -hmm. be a conductor on Broadway. And I, that's probably still the case right now, right? The first of which was, was Joyce, Joyce Brown. Brown. Joyce Brown. Joyce Brown was the first one. I don't mm -hmm. know what year that was. But there, Pearl, she oh, there, there she Pearl is. Pearly, 1970, I think. 1970, yeah. Pearly. Yes. She was the first. Yes. And she was not just the first black, we're given some black history now. She was not the first black woman conductor. She was the first black period, right? There were no, up until that point, 1970, mm -hmm. there had been no men as well as conductors on Broadway. Is that, unless, is that unless you can figure out who was the music director for Shuffling Along, the first one oh, in the okay. 20s. I All right. Just okay. don't know that little point. Oh, we should ask. Audra might know that. Audra is also one of the members, one of the founding members of Black People yes. Night. Um, so I'm going to ask her that later. Uh, mm -hmm. We know who that original conductor was. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Twine. So, yes. is Joyce Brown, she was one of your mentors or one of the people who Oh, yes. Joyce Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, Pearly mm -hmm. was the first Broadway show that I saw on Broadway. Oh, my you goodness. Know, a friend of mine said, you have to go see this show. Yeah. And there she was leading the, the orchestra in, in the pit. Mm -hmm. The solos were just spectacular. The choral singing, the band was pumping. Every, I saw the show five times. Every time friends would come to town, I said, let's go see Pearly. You know? <laughs> it, was, it was just phenomenal. And uh, she sort of took me under her wing and okay. with counseling yeah, and you know. all of that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And see, that's what we do. And that, C Cicely reminds me of a person that she had a school in Orange, New Jersey, where she she sort of nurtured people. I think Rhonda, the mm -hmm. night we were there, I, I, somebody invited us to go to go to her school the night we went to see Bountiful, a uh, trip to Bountiful. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so she was very much into bringing people along, uh, yes. like say Miss Joyce yeah. Brown did as well. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are some of your other uh, experiences? I know you did uh, Lena um, and her music. Uh, yeah. that show. Um, what was that experience like for you as a young uh, black woman conductor or piano? You've started off as a piano keys, right? Is that right? Playing piano two, the piano two book. Piano two book. And laid, uh, at, right after opening night, they made me con the, the conductor. Right after opening night. <laughs> right after opening night. <laughs> yeah, that was my opening. Anyway, anyway, it, it was a phenomenal experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there I was conducting for a major star, you know, and mm -hmm. making errors over here and over there, but did not bother her, you know, right. Right. which was very fortunate for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt I had the best seat in the house. Yeah. Sitting at the piano and, and having all those jazz greats in the band and just right. hearing them play and interpret that music every night. That's it, it was wonderful. One thing I can say, I can say a lot of things about Miss Horn. Mm -hmm. She walked the walk. Mm -hmm. She said for her band, if, if you've seen the show, it, it was multiracial. And we went on tour for 45 cities. And she insisted that there be blacks in the band. If there were blacks in that city that mm -hmm. could play, they should be in that orchestra. Mm -hmm. And I think there were only three cities where that did not happen. Now, some cities, you're just not going to find it, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, but she insisted on it. And it was a big deal. And we ran into some slight problems in Seattle and in Philadelphia because of that. You know, there was a lot of pushback. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the yes. The city of brotherly love. What you, yes. <laughs> that love was a little bit missing, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> My but, but it, it worked out, yeah. Okay, well, we, we thank you so much, Miss Miss Twine. You can hang you out with it. us. But you are Broadway royalty. That's right, Timothy oh, Jones. Thank you, my dear. He is, he is making, <laughs> I, I didn't, I'm saying it too, but he is chiming in on the little scroll the people talking you know he's saying oh, that you are probably royalty, and you are you are my dear uh, these you. next two young ladies are very much royalty as well oh yes I they are so happy to have <laughs> them in the house and stars in the house um let's see uh angela since yes, we just left this twine you and i met on the i'm gonna say the set on the the stage uh at the color purple the original color purple mm -hmm. uh, 
with Miss Twine as musical director. So we just want to jump over to you. And I know you feel the same way about this woman here. That's Miss I love oh, Miss <laughs> Angela. I oh, love my Miss Twine. <laughs> yes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> we love you too. We thank you. Um, but what what do you see as Miss Tyson's legacy and how mm -hmm. does it affect you in your career or in your life or in your thoughts, whatever you want to say? Well, so, so many, so many, in so many ways. Um, but I, I definitely have to echo what you said about Miss Twine because mm -hmm. um, she has that same kind of bring you along spirit. Miss mm -hmm. um, Twine is not going to leave nobody behind. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even when I had some struggles uh, when we were doing the color program, Miss Twine called me in her room. Mm -hmm. She said, "We're gonna work on this till you get it, baby." <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So that's right. just you know that's how she is, and mm -hmm. and um and that's a true diva. And Miss mm -hmm. Tyson, I feel, um, was the same way. I had the privilege of being in her presence um, several times, mm -hmm. um, because any time Tyler had something, uh, she was there, mm -hmm. and um, and every time she was so gracious mm -hmm. and um, the star of the room. Yes. Always, yes. Um, but I think that there, there, there are a few, many things that I've learned from her. But the, the few that stand out to me is I love theater, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how long I'm away. I always want to believe that I can come back, and yeah. so um, the fact that she was away thirty years. Mm -hmm. And came back to do Trip to Bountiful. Mm -hmm. it, it it encouraged me so much. And to see her up there, even at her age, they said mm -hmm. she never missed a show. No. She was, you know, and when I went to see it, she was her energy level, she was yes. phenomenal. So that really gave me hope, you know, because yes. I, I think a lot of things I want to do as an artist, but the one thing I want to do forever till the mm -hmm. day I die is mm -hmm. theater. Yeah, so, you know, to know that I could still walk on up there and <laughs> <laughs> get you some green juice, honey, get you some green juice. <laughs> and, um, you know, and have a home there. Um, it was encouraging to me. And also her um, her longevity. And when I say longevity, I don't think about longevity in terms of she's always been on top. Mm -hmm. But what encouraged me about her is that she wasn't always on top, that mm -hmm. she had times where we didn't see her for, for, for years in anything, mm -hmm. but that didn't take her out of the game. It didn't make her, um, uh, less giving less. Um, she didn't serve less out of her art. She was still an artist. Um, it just meant probably she was being selective mm -hmm. about, uh, the work that she did. And then lastly, I would say her imagery mm -hmm. that um, we saw, uh, we saw her in all sorts of ways in terms of black girl magic. Mm -hmm. And so being able to witness the images that she put forth, it really um, created a freedom for me as an artist. Um, it made me, you know, definitely see we went through the 70s movement, black is beautiful, but I saw it in her. Um, that all black is beautiful. Mm -hmm. No matter whether she was wigged out or braided out or bald, she mm -hmm. was she was beautiful. beautiful. So and she was just impactful. Um, mm -hmm. And I know to many, but those are the ways she was impactful to me. I want to say that I, if I had to give an award tonight, I wanted at one point I've thought about let me let me get a crown, but then I, I stayed on with people tonight when we did the sound checks. I was supposed to leave and I was going to go get a tiara because I wanted to pass the tiara to all of you tonight um, as queens. And I wanted specifically to give it to Angela um, because your person is what uh, Cicely Tyson epitomizes for me mm -hmm. in terms of the giving spirit, the warmth, yes, the yes. inviting character of you, yes. the nurturing of you, the giving, the preparing, the taking care of other people, mm -hmm. all of those things. What I felt with Cicely when I was in the room with her in terms of her just really listening and being asking me what I'm doing and being interested mm -hmm. in that. 
that's you. That's who you are. Oh, that's what you give to people. And yes. um, I just love you so much. I love all of you. Um, but I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us um, out of your schedule and to continue to pour into you so that you continue to have it, your art, your spirit, your artist and the spirit, the, all, all of the things that you're doing to build people up. Um, we just need it so much right now, especially right now. Um, thank you, sister. I want to thank you. Thank you for that. And I love I you. Sierra, I'd pass it to you right now. Oh, I receive it. I okay. receive it. Wear it. Wear it. We all wear our crowns and tiaras. I receive yeah. it. I'm honored to be on here with these ladies. Oh, I'm a huge God. fan of Rhonda's and Miss Twine is my heart. So, oh, my and you know how I feel about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ta-ta. Well, Rhonda has on her crown, honey. She's got her gay legs. She's all wrapped up. <laughs> right um, Rhonda Ross, how are you? I'm good, Natasha. How are you? Good. I'm doing wonderful. Could you please tell me what you think Mr. Tyson's legacy is and how it has affected your life? Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I can't add any words to all the incredible <laughs> words that have already been offered uh, in terms of her legacy. But in terms of how she affected me, mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, I was blessed to be in the same room with her on several occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to see uh, that she is the she she was the epitome um, of that ilk mm -hmm. of of artists that ilk of black artists that uh, like Miss Twine was just saying walk the walk. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible to be the kind of artist she was without walking walking the talk. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't. It, my husband uh, Rodney Kendrick and I have a saying that the art is incidental, the performance is into incidental. When you get up on that stage and you get in front of that screen, you are um, playing your life. Mm. It has to be in you to come out of you. Mm. And, uh, and I was blessed to, to, to be witness to that in so many people, Cicely, my mother, mm. uh, Abby Lincoln, um, uh, you know, as uh, Ms. Twine was just talking about Lena Horn, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nina Simone, these these people uh, walked their talk because you don't have a choice because mm -hmm. it has to come out of you. Uh, what 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 is inside comes out mm -hmm. and you can't fake it in that way. And um, so so that that is her impact on me. I know that not only do I have to do that, not only is there a mandate to do that, but it makes a difference. Um, I had this thought earlier today about the butterfly effect theory, that mm -hmm. idea that you have an impact, the smallest thing has an impact on the bigger world. And even before she was a legend and even before she was an icon, she knew her impact. She knew that, that the way she wore her hair or the choices of roles that she took was going to make it a, a reverberation throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And so I take that from her. And the other thing I take from her is what you were just talking about, how her, her graciousness, her generosity, mm -hmm. her love, her kindness mm -hmm. in the moments when she's not on stage, when you know, when you bump into her on the street and, and invite her to, to lunch, right? Mm -hmm. When you uh, when you see her backstage, she would come to um, I, I'm on the board of an organization called Hearts of Gold, and we support homeless mothers and children. And she came several times to those uh, galas and supported us. Um, she's was always just so gracious, like backstage at Bountiful with me and you. Mm -hmm. uh, just so gracious, so uh, inviting into her queendom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Do we have some of um, the pictures that uh, Aaron? Uh, I've always wanted ah! to see. Oh, 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 yeah, and that, at the center of right beside Cicely is Miss Ruby D. It's Ruby. So yeah. I don't know if we have time, but that was an incredible night, Natasha. Oh I want to tell that story yeah. that we went to see uh, Bountiful together, and we went backstage. And as we were waiting in the hallway to see Miss Tyson, we turn around and we're like, "Oh my God, that's Ruby D." <laughs> <laughs> you remember? And yes. um, Cicely invited both of us into the dressing room. And uh, with Ruby and the two of them just reminisced over oh their God. years yeah. in black theater. And we just sat there and kept pinching each other. Like, how are we in this room right now? How are we in this room right now? 
It was a remarkable night. It was yeah. a remarkable and, night. And not only were they talking and sharing stories and we just, just lapping it up, but then they looked at us and were like, okay, so now what do you do? What, who are yeah. you? What, all of that. And and I don't know what show I was in. I said it and they would just seem to be the most interested in me. And I thought, oh my God, this is what, yeah. This is what we do. We care about other people. We um, yeah, yeah, yeah. we 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 in, invite and pour into people so that that so that they can be the best they can be. So that we're all representing um, ourselves um, in the most in the best possible way, That's and our exactly and, and our right. potential can be fulfilled uh, with doing that. Um, uh, Aaron, as I'm talking, if we have some of the pictures that we have with Rhonda, um, I'd love to do that because I'm just going to talk a little bit and I think our time is, is coming. Mm -hmm. If we see oh, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, Tooney, yeah, tomorrow is actually Tooney. one of the founding members also of Black Theater United. Um, so please don't forget to get those donations going. And we like to thank Seth and James for inviting us to, to take over the mic for this month of February. Rhonda, who, 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 those are your, your nephew. I saw your that son. Was at, that was at the White House, um, the, the Medal of Freedom. Uh, she, oh, she Miss Tyson and my mother both got the Medal of Freedom the same year. That was, uh, yeah, so, so that's, um, that, that was in the White House with my son and my nephew. Wow. And that's at a Hearts of Gold um, function. Yeah, she was she was she was really remarkable, really remarkable. And like you said, Natasha, the 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 desire to pour into, um, uh, you know, Cicely had that. Ruby D had that. Um, yeah. And uh, and I did go to Cicely's school in Jersey, and I went to their opening day, and oh, I was so moved. I mean, the 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 artists, the young black musicians and dancers and singers, and I just was. So moved, and all the professors were black, and and it was just it was just such a, a an incredible an incredible environment that mm -hmm. Cicely created there, and she did not take on the honor of having her name up there without having the ability to be involved mm -hmm. and teach master classes and all kinds of things. It was it was a it's remarkable, mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. One thing I do want to say, and I better better make sure we say this. Um, you're talking about pouring into people. Uh, Black Theater United has some mentorship programs that one of them has, is live now, and that's with. Um, uh, oh gosh, it's the the acronym is not good. Yes, thank you. Um, the Early uh, Career BIPOC Theater Makers Program. That is with. Oh my goodness, I can't even think of the name of it, of who it is joint with. Somebody text me and tell me. Um, but this particular uh, program is for not only actors, but for uh, ed ed theater makers. So in every aspect, um, WT Festival, I'm trying to, Williamstown, that's it. Williamstown Theater Festival um, and Black Theater United have joined together for this um, early career theater makers program. Um, it will reach, uh, it is open to 18 year olds and above who are college, uh, in college, you can be at uh, any kind of college, uh, trade school, anything, but it's open to people um, that we're trying to reach out and extend those opportunities to. This this school that you went to with all these black teachers and these wonderful black artists that somehow um, get looked over at times. So we're trying to change that particular landscape and we need your help to do that. If you're interested in applying for that particular scholarship, please visit that that uh, website down at the end uh, on your screen um, and certainly visit Black Theater United and be able to just, just join us. We need allies, we need members, all of those things. And if you can make a donation, please do that so that we can continue to bring programs to people all over um, and just make our industry a better place, make our community a better place. Uh, Black Theater United is interested in, in, in every aspect of our country, of our world, of people. So please, ma'am, please, sir, where you can be involved, please do that. And then don't forget about the Actors Fund. Then don't forget to come back to Stars in the House um, and support Seth and James uh, here at Stars in the House because they're doing a wonderful job um, of helping to support artists um, in every aspect of performing area. So we love you all. We thank you. Anyone have any closing remarks to say before we close out? You're Aaron, doing a good job, Tasha. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it, helped, it helped that you guys are here and that I could just sort of sit back and talk and admire your beauty, admire our relationship, and um, just say that I want to more people to sit in the seat and experience these things. And, and I'd love to be the one to offer another opportunity to do that. Um, 
So we thank you for joining us here. And know that Black Theater United is going to um, take over uh, Stars in the House every Tuesday for the month of February. And we'd love for you to just visit our page and, and, and where you can be involved, please do that. Um, it is my honor to have served you tonight. It is my honor to have talked about Miss Cicely Tyson. Um, there was a lot of things we can talk about that we didn't get to, but let's let's meet on IG or on the phone or somewhere, <laughs> y'all. Um, and just, I want you to know I love you. I love you. I love you. you. Three that women is. before me now. I love the ones that have come before, and I love all of you. So let's get behind the business of making this world, our industry, a more level playing field, a more place, a place of, of equity and a place of uh, inclusion and a place of richness um, by using all and telling all of our stories and, mm -hmm. and using all of our talents. So we thank you again. We thank Seth and James for having us. And we thank you for the work that you're doing. Even when no one's looking, yeah. do the work, even when no one is looking. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, and ladies, you can say good night. And Aaron, who's backstage and making all things work well, if I've forgotten anything, tell me. <laughs> Send me a text or something. I've enjoyed being with you. And um, I invite you all to come back. Stars and House is here every night, I believe. It's a nightly uh, streamed program. Um, so you can always find somebody in the house. Somebody <laughs> in the house. And thank you for coming to the house tonight. Thank we you. love you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love you. Love you too. All right. All righty. Oh, am I still live? I just want to say good night. Love you all. <laughs>